Uh, just, so it's going to be distributed in and you distribute it in. It becomes what? P squared plus 4P times P minus 6. Now, first outer, inner, last, you end up with P cubed. If I could write P cubed. Um, minus 6P squared plus 4P squared minus 24P. What can you combine in there? Yeah, so you end up with p cubed minus 2p squared minus 24p. There it is. There. What I like to do is you can do anything times anything, but pick the first one in the first one. What I mean by that is, what's the first term in the first one here? A. Take A and multiply it by all other the other three in that order, and then do B and then do the next three, and then do, then do C and do the next three. So if you were to multiply this out right here, if you were to multiply this out, you end up with AD plus AE plus AF. And what would the next group be? Plus BD plus BE plus BF plus CD. I can almost write that, sorry. Plus CD plus CE plus CF. And then you'd be, you might have to simplify it. In that case, you can't because nothing's a common term. You just do everything times everything. That's it. You absolutely could. Sure. It should be the exact same answer. If you were to FOIL this first, you should get p squared minus 6p plus 4p minus 24, which simplifies to p squared minus 2p minus 24. But then what gets glued on the outside? The p, and that turns into p cubed minus 2p squared minus 24p. You could either way. Either way. Multiplication, you can do it in any order, right? It's commutative. A times B times C is C times B times A is B times C times A. Okay, so remember, it's everything times everything. So you get 12C squared. squared, And then what? 18CD? Oh, so it's CD. That's where I got it. Yeah, it's just CD. You can't do anything. Then it's going to be minus 2CD minus 3D squared. Why did I write it CD instead of DC? Simple oh, reason. Just keep it, generally speaking, do it in alphabetical order. You, you can rearrange these in many different ways. And it's nice if we had some common thread. It's kind of like why we use X and Y all the time. Is there any real reason why X and Y are the most common variables? Someone just started doing that a long time ago and decided to keep on going. It's also a poor choice. I mean, M and N, P and Q, we tend to choose letters that are similar to one another, like M and N. They sound and look alike. Is that a good idea? No, but it's just it's how it is. So what does this simplify to? 12C squared. What does this combine to be right here? Plus 16CD minus... 3d squared. Done. Asking the sum of two terms and what's the difference of two terms? Does everybody see that? Yeah. That's the sum of two terms and the difference of two terms. Explain why when you multiply this isn't a trinomial. Just actually multiply it. What's a times a? Or what's your, what did you get for an answer? Sorry. Uh -huh. Inside and outside. Yeah. What happens? They do, exactly. So it's a squared minus, well, minus ab plus ab minus b squared. These cancel, leaving you with a squared minus b squared. So it's just a binomial. That's a really cool question. I like that one. So there's different paths you could take. What should we do first? What do you think? Distribute what? Yeah, let's take the 4x and just distribute it into the first term. I like that idea. What do you end up with? 12x to the fourth plus what? Mm-hmm. And this one carries down. And then you just need to make sure you multiply everything. 12 times 3 is? X to the fourth times X to the third is? Yep. And then you get minus 48X to the fourth, right? Yeah. And then you get plus what? X to the fourth. And you get minus 64X. What can't? Oh, that cancels. And you're left with 36X to the seventh minus X. Yep. You can do it either way. Now, Lich, could you just see this as a plus b times a minus b? Yeah. <laughs> that equals just 3x cubed squared minus 4 squared, right? That's what we got, essentially, and then we multiplied it by 4x. It's just the difference of squares. That's all it is. It's the other one, the other one referenced. Okay, Kelly, is, I think something along the lines of if I had 5 to the third times 10 cubed times... 2 times 10 to the negative 4. How do I simplify that? What do I do to simplify that? Do I multiply these two together? No. no. What do I multiply together? Uh, 2 5. Yes, yeah, so you get 2 times 5 to the third times 10 to the third times 10 to the negative fourth. Now which two can I combine? The 10 to the third. Yeah, what does that become? 
10 to the? 10 to 7. Do you subtract? Is, is the, uh, what do you do with the powers, Kelly? Is the what do you do with the powers? I, I don't know. Oh, okay. So what's your question then? Is there a... Uh, a to the M times A to the N is equal to... Do you remember that? Can anybody help them? Plus N. You add them. So you're always adding them. If they're multiplying together, yes. So it's to the negative one power. Correct. So you multiply the constants, withdraw constants, but then the powers you take care of separately. Can someone give me some things I could immediately cancel? A lot of zeros can immediately cancel. This cancels with that. That cancels with that. So what are we now left with? 200 times 0 0.018 over 3 times 0 0.004. Yes, what's your question? No, you can't. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. You absolutely can. I mean, in the front, you mean? No, no, no. In the decimal? Yeah. You absolutely can. You could. There's two, you can't cancel them all, but you're abs you absolutely can because if you look at this, if you got rid, that's a really cool maneuver. I've never actually thought of it that way. But if you get rid, no, but if you get rid of that, it makes it ten times bigger, right? Yeah. But if you get rid of this too, it makes the bottom ten times bigger. Yeah. If you make the top and the bottom ten times bigger, what have you done? Yeah. Nothing, right? Yeah. What's ten over ten? So theoretically, you could do that. You could do two hundred times zero point one eight all over three times zero point. Zero four. Now you need to do a little bit of math here. Zero point zero zero zero. Oh, you're right. The the starting is there's another zero in there. Absolutely. Thank you. Correct. So now what do I write this in? So this is two times ten squared times one point eight times what? Ten to the ten to the what? Negative one over three times. 4 times 10 to the what? Negative what? 1, 2, 3. Negative third? Like this? Sure. So that's where they come from. So now, how can you rearrange this? 2 times, yeah, 1.8. I'm just, yeah, exactly. We're going to put everything next to each other that can easily go. But what's 3 times 4? 12 times 10 to the negative 3, right? What's this when you multiply it together? What's 10 squared times 10 to the negative 1? 10. So that's 10 to the first over 12 times 10 to the negative 3. What's 2 times 1.8? 3.6 times 10 over 12 times 10 to the negative 3. We might have made a mistake some notation. What would it be? Yep, times 10 over 1.2 times 10 to the, we made this smaller, so if we make the other one bigger, so it's going to be to the what power? Negative second, yep. What's 3.6 over 1.2? 3 times 10 to the first over 10 to the negative 2. That's 3 times 10 to the 1 minus what? What do you do with powers when you divide? Yes, because what do you know? A to the M over A to the N is equal to A to the? M minus N, so we go back to here, 1 minus negative 2 is going to be 3 times 10 to the first, so it's what? 30. 3 times, so 3,000? Anybody get 3,000? Yeah. Two people? I don't, I think I'm going to let you. I answered yeah. the scientific notation. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so here's the question that I want you to work on. Excellent. Okay. So I'm going to, there we go, we'll do these few first right here. Side of uh, the blue square in terms of A and B, it's going to be A minus B and A minus B. What is the formula for the area of the square? A minus B squared. Each green rectangle has an area of B times what? A minus B. A goes from there to there. A goes all the way across. So what's the distance from there to there? A minus B. Distance from there to there is B. So what's the area of each green one? B times A minus B. Therefore, the total area in green is rep therefore the total area in green is represented by what? Don't pack up yet, kids. Two times A. 
Well, it's two of them, right? Two times A minus B times B. Oh, yeah, okay, you got to put the B on the other side. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah, there's two of them. That's fine. Sure. Could you multiply that out if you wanted to? Sure, don't have to. The yellow square has an area of what? What? B squared. The area of the entire colored region is represented by by what? A squared. A squared. Because each side of the entire colored region has a length of A. A. That's correct. Okay, so your homework, make check these over and do the other one.